Do you know me? Let's make this political power structure ours. It's because of the killing of the spirit and the meaning and the belief of American democracy that I do impeach the president of the United States. When Bella first ran, it was considered such a unicorn event. There just weren't that many women running. She was blunt, she was candid, she was poking the beast. Would you support Nixon's body won? Walking in the street with Bella, people would be yelling, give him hell, Bella. If a doorman or a taxi driver said something she disagreed with, she would argue with him, because she really cared. I wanted her to get elected because we desperately needed her voice. So I went out with her on this truck. That people have to live. People have a fundamental right to eat. When she got to Washington, it was an explosion. Are you suggesting to me that all of your files of the CIA are presently in the possession of the FBI? I will refuse to have you say we are arbitrarily acting in this regard, Madam Chairman. Also for a lot of us women, most of our lives we were told to shut up and sit down. And it was very encouraging to be with a woman who was saying to us, speak up. In another groundbreaking effort, she introduced the first national gay and lesbian rights bill. Bella was way ahead of the curve. And the rest of the world had to catch up. I'm ready to go! What's happening here? Are they, whoever they are, are they trying to do something to you? Mrs. Abzug said her CIA file dated back to 1953 and included reports on her anti-war activities and Vietnamese contacts. I'm here in the New York delegation with Bella Abzug and her famous hat. Do you ever take that on? What a question. I was bold because of Bella. Bella and those other Congress women, they spoke up, they spoke out, they organized, they challenged, and I felt capable to do that and a responsibility to do it. There is not even one woman among the 100 U.S. senators. She did like to be first, but I was afraid she would lose everything. I don't remember Bella ever sharing doubts or concerns about anything. She would just say, you gotta get in there and fight. She knew that she wasn't there just for Bella and her generation, that she was there to make sure that the doors were open for what came next. I'm good. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you. What a nice looking spot. Are you at home? Yeah, this is my place in Harlem. Oh, very good. It is a, it's a duplex, obviously. Yeah. Very nice. Yes. Um, yeah. Nice to meet you. you. I'm in uh, the Hudson Valley. I'm up uh, up uh, up the Hudson about 100 miles up. <laughs> nice. I'm based up here now. Are you in the, the town of Hudson or? Right across the river. Okay. In a town called Athens. Okay, that's a beautiful spot. But we see, we can see it from our, you know, neighborhood. <laughs> so, yeah, Hudson's very close. Uh, well, my first, I guess, my first question uh, is, uh, what, what, what took so long for a proper documentary to be made about Bella Abzug? That's the big question. Oh, I thought you were going to ask me why it took me so long to make my film. Well. <laughs> I know how long documentaries take, right? You know, under the best of circumstances. So <laughs> don't, you know, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you know, that was surprising to me too. Actually, when I first was uh, suggested to do a documentary on Bell Abs, like I sort of laughed at the idea because I thought, my God, I'm sure this has been done a million times before. Um, and I was kind of shocked that there hadn't been anything on Bella really. Um, properly done on her in a full sort of comprehensive look at her whole life. Um, and, you know, I can only speculate as to why that is. Um, you know, I think her, her era is really the 70s um, and she died in 98. So, you know, people tend to be more reflective on people after they die and 
we're definitely in an era now where we're looking back on the 70s quite a bit, as you can see from like the Watergate pieces that are being done and Nixon and that kind of thing. And so maybe 50 years is sort of the mark when we start to look back on things mm -hmm. properly. But, you know, I, I would sort of be short-sighted if I didn't say that, um, you know, Bella was definitely pigeonholed by the press and by a sexist society um, for much of her life. Yeah. Um, and I think people didn't really give her the fair due that she was deserved. I mean, the people around her and who supported her and loved her and championed her knew what she was doing and and how um, brave and bold and smart and uh, accomplished and uh, courageous she was. But I think generally people just sort of pigeonholed her as like the lady with the hat or somebody, the big feminist. The that loud kind of mouth. Loud. <laughs> right. Um, so yeah, it's, you know, only now that we're really sort of like coming to a time where we're looking at people in a more nuanced way. Mm, yeah, I mean, I, I, I certainly having grown up in the seventies and eighties, um, with a mother who I think was would probably be, could be described as a feminist. She, uh, I mean, my mom was a big fan of Bella Hepsut, so and I was growing up in the boroughs, you know, and I, I have very great memories of just, you know, sharing that with my mother and finding Bella to be such a. Uh, entertaining and um, charming person you know like I just loved her and I love the hats and um, so my memories of Bella were always really positive and I really admired her even as a youngster because of um, you know it was a very feminist household I grew up in so uh, she you know but she just had a lot of uh, charm except for those who were humorless you know <laughs> they, they just wouldn't like but if you had humor you like Bella Abzug I mean it just seemed right yeah I, I think charm is the perfect word to use um and i hope that comes across in the film i mean it does she was yeah. very good good yeah yeah we can funny. take a moment to compliment your documentary right now since you brought that up and uh it is a very entertaining documentary and uh you i think um you know did not only you just did a, a smart job with uh really showing her and all of her uh, moments, you know, good and bad. And also, uh, I didn't realize just how many, you know, feminist um, celebrities were, you know, working so hard back in the time to get her, help her and, uh, you know, spread the word about her campaigns and whatever, what have you. Yeah, I think those those women, you know, had very few choices about who to support. That's and true. Right. When, when one came along, like Bella, it was like, okay, this is obvious. Like, this is where I need to at least do my part to throw my celebrity behind and say, like, we need to get this woman elected. She was also really shrewd. I mean, we say she's charming, but she was also really shrewd. I mean, she, uh, I, I mean, just we could talk about those celebrities like that are actually in the film because they're all still alive and quite well, it seems. But you have uh, Renee Taylor and Shirley MacLaine, of course, um, uh, Marlo Thomas, Barbara Streisand. It's pretty remarkable. That it shows not only maybe how charming you are that you were managed to get these women to uh, uh, contribute to the documentary, but also just how much Bella meant meant and means to them. And the other thing is, she shrewd because she realized just even the hat. I mean. Just having something that's like a, such a strong signature, you know, uh, she just sort of seemed to understand that it was important to be kind of become a celebrity, even though she would never, I don't think, admit it as much. Right. The, the hat was sort of like almost like what we call trademark branding today. Trademark. Right. Yeah. And, you know, I don't think she really intended for it to be that. Or maybe she did. And, you know, maybe in a subconscious way, who knows? But it really became so recognizable. I mean, she'd right. be walking out, out in the streets of Washington and people would would recognize her immediately because, oh, you know, there's Bella Abzug. Um, it really, it really did lend to her celebrity. And I think celebrity kind of helped her, um, you know, gain support, win votes, win backing. You know, it, it really did elevate her in a big way. 
Um, and I won't take the compliment for uh, being charming to get those interviews. I think all those women basically love Bella and, you know, as you said in your first question, like felt like her legacy was way overdue for mm. uh, being honored. Um, and that's something I hadn't really realized when I started the film that other people felt that way too. Right. Um, so that was really nice to to sort of realize that when once I started getting into production. Yeah, well, I mean, and also their political, uh, you know, all these um, female politicians who, you know, very clearly admit to standing on her shoulders, like Hillary Clinton, uh, Nancy Pelosi, who else? Uh, Maxine, Maxine, Maxine. Um, there are number, probably a number of others I'm, I'm leaving out. But thank, yeah, so we all owe you a thank you for making this documentary. Everybody who remembers Bella and know, remembers what, how much she accomplished, you know. Um, and she just went up against the biggest and the boldest. Uh, so the fact that she lost some elections is just speaks more to me as your uh, documentary illustrates. It speaks more just to the the fear of the powers uh, uh, be, that be and how much of a threat she was to them at the time. Oh, yeah. She was scary to a lot of people. Um, Congress was. 97% male when Bella was first elected in 71. And that was a system that was very much entrenched into keeping it that way. Yeah. Did not want someone like Bella, you know, coming in and challenging them, changing things, questioning them. That was a system that was very much running on its own for, for decades um, and had its own sort of systems of how things worked. And it really wasn't democratic at all um small d democratic like it was there to serve their interests um and bella was smart and shrewd as you said like to know that like okay this is not how the framers intended this to work this is um not serving the people it's not serving the country it's not serving um the way things were meant to be um and she went in and challenged them and really you know was like a bull in a china shop and yeah i was gonna use that exact um expression too <laughs> and you know it didn't win her fans or or friends but she knew that this was wrong um and she really thought that she could change things which was you know remarkable of her to to tackle it and she had allies too there were people like ron dellums and um shirley chisholm later Elizabeth Holtzman, um, who really mm. saw things the same way. Charlie Rangel went to Congress the same year she did. Um, so, you know, she had supporters and allies, but I think people really saw Bella as the one who was going to, like, not take no. Right. Yeah. Where'd you grow up, Jeff? Uh, I grew up in Vancouver, Canada. Oh. Yeah. Huh. And, and when did you... Uh, uh, obviously, you live in the New York City. Uh, uh, when did that happen, I guess? When did you move to the United States? I first moved to the United States in um, right around 2000. Oh. Um, first to New York <clears throat> and then um, to Los Angeles. And um, so I've, I've been in this country, you know, good 20 odd years, 20 plus years almost as long as I was in Canada. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, Canadians sort of have an interesting perspective growing up because we sit on the, the sidelines of a very big elephant that mm -hmm. can roll over on us at any time and without us realizing. Um, so we, we can be both ad, admire the country, but also critical of it um, and see it, you know, from a different perspective without all the patriotism that you know might be fed into us as as children um but I, it also was always a very exciting place to me as a as a kid growing up and I sort of consumed American media and visited New York often as a kid and sort of yeah loved had you ever heard of Bella Epsa I were you familiar I, with her not really we we grew up in sort of a feminist household as well, and mm -hmm. with a strong Jewish sensibility. And we read, you know, books by Letty Cotton Pogrebin, 
um, who's in the film and was very much in Bella's camp. Um, and I potentially had heard of Bella, but I didn't quite know her. Uh, and it was actually not until I watched uh, Rick Burns' documentary, New York, a documentary film, um, which is one of my favorite documentaries. It's, I think, 13 episodes and it's, you know, uh, 13 hours plus. Uh, and Bella was interviewed for that film. And I was just sort of really enamored by her when I first saw her interviewed and uh, realized that she was, you know, one of these New York icons. Along right. with but what is it to you? If you think back now, I mean, you're obviously been so immersed in all things Bella for the last number of years that you've been, uh, you know, making the film. And by the way, we should mention as a sidebar or whatever, the footnote that you uh, directed, produced, shot, <laughs> edited this documentary. So, it, of course, it took a while to make it. But uh, what do you what what do you why 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 do you feel uh that you connected to her on a personal level like I, as soon as you saw that ken burns episode probably in new york in the 70s i'm guessing or maybe she that's when she was brought into the production i'm, not, I'm just guessing because i don't think i saw that series actually yeah it was rick burns ken's, oh, ken's rick brother. rick oh oh i misheard okay rick yeah rick is both burns brothers have been on my podcast at one point or another so i am oh, cool. familiar with rick too my, all my heroes. Yeah, he's a delightful guy. Yeah. Um, you know, I think I think I connected to Bella for many reasons. Um, one, the ones I've already mentioned, you know, how bold and courageous and um, admirable she is just for taking on, you know, the system and challenging uh, things through her activism. Like that to me is always inspiring. And I, I count people like... Um, her and uh, Larry Kramer and uh, mm -hmm, other activists mm -hmm. is, you know, people I really admire. Um, two, I think, you know, she's she's Jewish and, and was bold and forthright about that too. And as a Jewish person, you always look to heroes that you sort of want to connect with and emulate. Um, and for me, I think she's like a, a unknown Jewish hero in some ways. Like, I don't think enough people in the Jewish community know about her or recognize her as the hero status that she should have. Mm -hmm. um, additionally, as a gay person, like I see her her fighting for for gay rights um, early, early on before very early you know, before people were talking about gay rights, um, other than the gay activists. Like she was one of the very first allies to really take on the cause and saw you know, these are her constituents and it doesn't really matter what she believes or doesn't believe, like this is what her constituents um, believe and feel and, and need. And she represents, she understood she actually represents those folks <laughs> like, exactly. as opposed to uh, big interests, big money, other things exactly. where we've gotten to. And um, the name of the documentary is called Bella. And is it... Uh, there is a, I wasn't sure if it was a sub part of the title of the film proper, This Woman's Place is in the House. Is that par all part of the proper title? That's that's a subtitle. Well, yeah, no, I get it. Um, but we should mention that because it's clever. <laughs> it's clever. <laughs> Bella, exclamation point. That's also important because Bella Abzug was a human exclamation point. So, right? <laughs> you can true. use that, by the way. What? True. There was there was no getting around not having that exclamation point. I mean, you're sure was, quite right. Was, yeah, yeah, absolutely true. Uh, and it is going to be in theaters. Um, it's in the East Village, close enough, close enough to the West Village, I'd say. Mm -hmm. um, in New York City, the Village East, um, and in LA, of course, at the Lemley um, Monica. I don't know which one. It's going to be at a few Lemley theaters, oh, but Lemley oh, good. Monica, Lemley Royal. Yeah. That's great. Uh, as of a Friday, August 18th. So people should go out and support Jeff Lieberman's film. And, you know, um, something about American politics having to uh, be 
um, incremental. It's always about incrementalism here and moving slowly. She was not one to move slowly. She was like what you said earlier, kind of a, the bull in the china shop. She, she didn't. Do you, do you, uh, she, she didn't really pay attention to what mainstream politics thought uh, or was right or the proper way to do things. She, she believed enough strongly in herself and her own values and to uh, do pursue her uh, policies, et cetera, and the campaigns exactly the way she was going to. Um, and um, just, I guess at the end of the day, I wonder if, if you feel like, did she, you know, make uh, an error? It, was that, because it, it ultimately would get in her way, wouldn't it, when she mm -hmm. tried to uh, enter more into the mainstream nationally, internationally? Yeah, no, it's it's something we definitely wanted to examine in the film. Like, was she actually effective with this style of uh, politics? And I think, you know, she served three terms in Congress. Yeah, and, she could have easily continued in Congress, right? We know that. We know that uh, there was really no competition. She could have stayed there till she retired. Yeah, like Charlie Rangel went in in, in 70 the same year she did. He was there until the 90s. <laughs> Um, or 2000s, maybe even, I think 2000s. Roughly around the same time that Pella probably died. Yeah. Um, and, you know, she decided to to give up that seat for a run for Senate, which was entirely male at that time. And then she had to face, you know, a bigger um, voting block than just the West Village and, you know, the West Side of Manhattan. And that's when, you know, she was sort of having to confront whether people beyond New York City would would vote for her and whether this style, which some found abrasive, um, could work. But in actuality, she 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 could have won that Senate uh, Democratic primary, um, as we show in the film, if, you know, the, the sort of losing candidates had dropped out. Uh, it was so narrow that she yeah. could have won. She lost to uh, Pat Moynihan by one percent point. Correct. Right. But then you see the next year she she ran for the New York mayoralty and you know won Manhattan, but couldn't convince voters in the other four boroughs. So even in New York City, uh, you know she did potentially rub men. Let's just be honest. Like maybe it was men that. Oh, uh, it was men. It was men. <laughs> it just couldn't was... handle. Yeah, you know, a strong totally. woman telling them, telling yeah. them what, what, what it was all about, what it was like. Um, thank you so much. Uh, the again, the name of the documentary. I, I want to make sure I don't botch the subtitle because it's a clever subtitle. This woman's Bella, exclamation point. This woman's place is in the house again. It will be opening in New York City and LA, I assume, for consideration, possibly. I, I don't know, but yeah. um, uh on the 18th of August, support independent documentaries like Jeff Lieberman's is my plea. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's just terrific finally meeting you. It's taken me a long time to have you on here, but uh, better late than never, right? <laughs> yeah, we, you know, one day we should talk about The Amazing Nina Simone, my previous film, which I know, which was also a lot of fun and uh, really amazing experience to make. I would love to, I haven't seen it and I would love to correct that um, problem uh and yeah but who really knew who really likes nina simone really at the end of the day you know <laughs> everyone <laughs> oh yeah that's right <laughs> yeah another amazing woman uh and uh I, yeah amazon, it's been a, say that again that's on amazon streaming on amazon oh very Google. good so yeah. i have no excuse no we'll watch that i promise and uh, yeah, if you wouldn't, if you would come back on, we can talk about Nina Simone. That would be fantastic. Of course. Um, but uh, all right. Well, and if you ever, if you get a chance, uh, come up to the Woodstock Film Festival. It's happening at the end of September. And uh, um, the, I'm, I also kind of do work with them. So. And, you know, I think I just got an inquiry this week about uh, playing Bella at TSL, which I believe is up in your neck of the woods. Yeah. Time space limited. That would be in Hudson, right? Uh, yeah. yeah um, that. Oh, well. If you do that, we should do the Q and A. Or well, I'm sure they'll want to do the Q and A. But you should come up. I'll. I'll definitely come out and 
and uh, certainly promote that screening too. So, I'll keep you posted on it. I, I'm please do. Hoping it'll be yeah. in the next few weeks or so. Oh, really? So it is happening? Uh, I believe so, yeah. Oh, wonderful. Well, that's, yeah, yeah it's just minutes from where I, I am right now. Um, here I'll put my, uh, this makes for such exciting uh, podcasting. This, but I put my uh, awesome my my email in there. You can just contact me there. I won't read it out loud. What? I won't read it out loud. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Adam. Much success with the documentary. We'll get have to get the word out, so everybody should know who Bella Abzug is. Absolutely, and people and can you... go to bella 1970com to buy tickets for New York or LA. That it all links from there. Oh, perfect. Okay. We'll put that in the end of the uh, video version. And then uh, also, and I met, I should have also, there are Ronnie Eldridge, all sorts of amazing Ronnie, subjects yes. that you talk to in the film. So anybody who has an interest in activism needs to see this documentary. You know. Agreed. All right. Have a great uh, weekend. Thank you, Adam. Great to all meet right. you. Same here. Take okay. care. Okay. Bye-bye.